Hey guys, so today I've got a video that quite frankly I've been putting off for a very long time because I've just been terrified to do it, but screw it. The time is now, let's go ahead and get it done. Um, so what I've got before me is a Game Boy Micro. What we're going to do today is overclock it. I ordered uh, one of these bad boys and it did come with something. I, I ordered two things at the same time and they just shipped it in the same bag. Uh, I've already done a video on the other one. Uh, so that's why there's nothing else in here, but we've got one of these fabulous things from Inside Gadgets. This is the Clock X control. Um, we're going to cram it in here. It comes with quite a bit of wire, but I don't think we're going to be using any of this wire on account of needing all the space we can get. But just just to show, this is a perfectly working Game Boy Micro, and uh, let's see if we can't fix that. Uh, so I'm going to, ex excuse me if I refer back to my notes quite a bit here. Um, I'm referring to uh, two completely different resources, uh, both the Inside Gadgets install instructions for this thing and um, some resources on the Game Boy Micro, but as far as taking apart the Micro goes, I always forget to do this, we need to pop the faceplate out. I usually like to get a fingernail under there for leverage and then you just stick a tool in each of these holes to release both clips. Take it apart, it's these two massive tri-point screws. Leave the rest of the screws alone for now. And then four tri-point screws, little tiny ones, are on the periphery. Two on the top, two on the side. And then from here, the metal shell is completely released. Set this stuff aside, we won't be using it for a while. Take out the start, select, and power buttons. And we're going to pop this, or before I pop the screen out. So the instructions say we can actually place the uh, module here, and it'll fit under the screen, and that does actually seem to be the case. It does teeter-totter a little bit, but there is enough enough clearance uh, once the metal shell is on. If we take it out, you can see the screen does sit completely flat. I was playing with the idea of putting it right here. I think it might fit a little bit better, but then the screen sticks up in one corner. I don't know if that's any better. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more. Unfortunately, there's just no good place to put it. Um, if we didn't have a speaker right there, it would be fantastic. That actually works. Almost. Yeah, there's just so little room in these things. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Let's pop the screen out. side and to continue taking it apart we need to remove three long GIS crosshead screws all in the plastic bracket here This rear frame comes off. It's clipped onto that shoulder button. It might take a little bit of maneuvering. The shoulder button's out of there. And then four more short crosshead GIS screws. One on the left, three on the right, under the D-pad. Alright, and then 
and flip it over. We can lift it off. Make sure you push the start select board through, otherwise it'll get stuck. You do not want that. If you break it, you're going to be uh, you're gonna regret it. It's fixable, but it's a lot of work for something you don't want to have to do. Sorry, I'm just replacing the membrane while I'm here. I don't like how that one feels. And I have an extra one, so why not? Alright, so normally this speaker would come off and it would stick to the frame itself, but if you guys harken back to a video I did a long time ago where I got this micro, this is the one that I got in a baggie of parts, and the speaker was one of the few things I didn't have. So as far as overclocking this goes, we simply need to replace this crystal. Now, we want to do a variable overclock so that we can play some games normal speed or most games normal speed most of the time, uh, which means we need to replace this entirely. We can't just add on to it. Unfortunately, this is a surface mount part, so I'm going to need to use hot air, and this is, quite frankly, what terrified me. I was afraid, since it's so close to the CPU, if I mess up the ball grid array on this thing, I... I just, I simply won't be able to fix it. It's not within my current skill set. Um, maybe one day, but not today. So to take precautions here, I'm going to use plenty of this aluminum tape I have to try and shield components. have used this method before successfully with um, hot air gun when desoldering stuff so hopefully now with my hot air station a little bit more success one of the guides that I'm going to link in the description um, they used pliers to remove this Oh, I can't even begin to explain how, to express how terrible of an idea that is. Um, this, I guess, isn't that much better, but at least we're not risking permanently ruining the PCB because these things are kind of expensive, um, if you weren't completely aware. There are no replacement parts for the most for most of the parts on this machine. Surprisingly, screens are replaceable. Cheaply, too. And recently some buttons have popped up. Like these clear ones, but that's pretty much it. Alright. So I think that's as good as we're going to get it. Everything is masked off. Um, it should be good enough. Gonna get a little bit of flux on here. Syringe would be better, but work with what you have. All right, hot air time. I'm gonna crank up the heat because I have no idea what I'm doing, and because this is lead-free solder. Now I'm going to use my hot air gun on this. Word of warning: if you're sensitive to this sort of thing. When my hot air gun is on, it makes my lights flicker. So, like I said, if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, now would be a good time to look away. Um, but otherwise, here goes nothing, I guess. We'll give it a second to heat up. 
probably could have put a smaller nozzle on it, but... This is the part that I've been absolutely terrified of. I should have grabbed my ceramic tweezers. That would have made more sense. I feel like all my flux just fucked off. Alright, it should have come off by now. I'm gonna stop and reevaluate. Let's try more heat. Let's also not aim that at my phone. It's probably bad. This is one of the things that I was afraid of, because I don't know how to get this off if this doesn't work, and this isn't working. Oh, there it goes. Okay, got it, okay. Whew. So that's off. I didn't even ruin it, so I could put it back down if I want to. Whew, okay. All right, I need to go, uh, I feel like I need to go have a cigarette. Um, no, I'm gonna go take a quick break though, let this thing cool down because I'm sure it's just entirely too hot to handle, and uh, I'll be right back. Alright, it's still a little bit hot, but it's cooled, cooled down enough to work with. Um, so for those keep track at home, this is my first time using my hot air gun on something like this, and uh, I had it set to 430 degrees Celsius at two and a half air, whatever that means. And you can see my tape didn't do a whole lot to keep out the flux, but that's okay. We won't be needing the hot air again. Let me get a cotton swab and let's clean up all the flux. Good enough. Wait for my hot air gun to heat up, or hot air gun soldering iron rather. So there were four pads for that crystal, but we only need one of them. I'm going to tin all of them though, just because it's going to make me feel better about what I'm doing here. But 
also because I'm working with um, leaded solder and the unleaded stuff that's on this board doesn't necessarily mix very well. There we go. I didn't even disturb that little itty bitty capacitor. Nice. Alright, so are we going to stick this thing right here? That is the question. Oh. What we're definitely going to do is fix the solder joint on this capacitor, because there's a bit of a dangly bit. And I need all the room I can get. Where can we put this thing? Unfortunately, there are no good spots. It'd be interesting if we could cram it entirely underneath the speaker, though. Nope. I guess it's going on top of the CPU. Alright, so Alex has so thoughtfully provided some captain tape already on this to insulate it. I'm going to remove that because I need as much vertical as I can get. Uh, there's also these solder balls on the bottom. I guess those went through the vias. I'm going to snip them off. I need flat. And that is flat. Excellent. So now I need a little bit of double sided tape. Is this double sided tape or is this just adhesive backing? That's just backing. So you know all the 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 screen adhesives, like these things for the IPS kits? Pop out the middle and save the middle for um, shit like this. I'm looking for some of the 3M stuff I have. Here we go. This actually looks like something off the roll I have, but this will be fine. A little bit much, but that's okay. covering up that beautiful CPU. But I'll get over it. One last look. This it says CPU AGB, not CPU Oxy. Just thought that's kind of funny. To put that offset so that we can make it nice and flat and still solder to these. So there are quite a few wires that need to be soldered up. I'm going to try and use my epoxy wire and bear with me, I'm just checking that needs to go. 
block needs to go there. Okay. So this wire needs to be that long. I'm actually going to use Kapton for this because I'll just use the wire that Alex included. Look at how long this is. What does he think I'm doing here? I think this is 30 gauge. Yep. So this wire is about twice as long as it needs to be, but that's okay. Tin that again. Solder this to the top right pad. Introduce a little bit of flux. Because I keep getting a crusty joint. I don't want a crusty joint. No one wants a crusty joint. There we go. And then we'll bend this up. I suppose I can zoom in a little. Actually, I have so much more room to work with now that I've dismantled this light. And that'll go on that clock pad right there. There we go. Next, let's go ahead and wire up the power, which, so we have these two pads right here, voltage minus, voltage plus. So the top one is ground, the bottom one is the positive input from the battery. Oh, I'm 90% sure this is 3.3 volts. I should have checked this. Um, hang on, maybe we can still check it. Where is my battery? There it is. Hopefully this thing will still boot up all the power management circuitry without the clock installed. So, if we boot this up, I believe this is battery voltage. Nope. Or it's not even on anymore. Hmm. What pin is it? Let me find out. V3. Oh, so I was checking the right one the second time. Yeah, I don't think it's actually booting up. Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll just wing it. Just double check one more time. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I was just checking the wrong pads. So that is right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and... There's actually plenty of room, so I'm gonna use these wires. Plenty of room for the wire, at least. So we wanna use this pad down here by the speaker, V3. On mine, there's already solder on it, but I don't know if that's something that I did or the person who had this open last did or what. I definitely need more heat on my iron, though. Because there are zero thermal reliefs on that, and my iron is not even touching. Oh, yeah, and this is unleaded solder. So that's probably not helping. So much more difficult with that speaker in the way. I just want a pretty joint that I can be proud of. Is that too much to ask? Apparently so, because I'm butchering this. Oops. Try not to stick your iron in uh, a plastic bag you have off to the side. It's, uh, it's kind of stinky. There we go, that's beautiful. Ugh, now it smells like burnt plastic. Oh well. Alright, then we can route that up, up, and over here. Eh, I already tinned it, I think. Ooh. What is going on with me today? I cannot do a simple solder joint to save my life. This is the wrong mod to be doing today. Ugh. And I messed up my wire too. Ooh. Where are my flush cutters? Why'd I put them away?
doesn't matter nearly this much, but I just just want to do all right by you. There we go. Good thing I cut that slightly long. I ended up trimming some of it off. Okay. There's that. And now we need a ground wire and I'm going to again do exactly what they suggested because the wire pathing looks nice and clean. And we want this B minus pad all the way up in the top left here. not the right tip for tinning these pads. There we go. Once they're tinned, I can solder with it just fine. But getting them tinned is the difficult part. Ah, oh, I dropped the wire. Oh, it didn't go far. all these components in betwixt and we want that that long Sorry, I think I was not only out of frame, but blocking that one. Of course, it's the best one yet. Eh, I don't like that. We're going to route it straight across that missing component. Even though it's not missing, we just replaced it. Oh, I almost forgot. I was about to start putting this back together. Um... We need button controls. So Alex has his set to use the shoulder buttons and it looks like either start or select. We'll do the exact same thing. Uh, buttons, buttons, buttons. Where in the Sam hell does that go? Okay. So on Alex's board here, this left middle pad of these six groups, this is select, and then these two pads that are already tinned. I thought this was accidental, but it looks like he did this on purpose, and that was actually quite genius, and thank you, Alex. The three of these six that are already have solder in them are the pads that you need to solder to for button controls. So, like I said, this left one is the uh, like control or enable button. So while you're pressing this one, which will wire to either start or select or something, you can use up or down these two on the right to control it. Um, and so up will wire over to this button, down will wire over to the shoulder button up here, and then this one will wire to start or select or, or whatever it is. And let's see what we've got. So it says we just need to wire to that itty bitty little via down there. 
Ugh. I don't like that at all. Hang on. I'm gonna research a better place to solder to because I'm 100% sure one... Uh, well, hang on. I've got a multimeter. I can check it real easily. Hadoi! So it says to solder to this itty little... Itty bitty little via right there. But I thought one of these test pads was the button. Okay. Just double checking my meter. Oh, maybe it's over here. It certainly could be. No, maybe not. I don't see it on any of these test pads. Wouldn't be on one of those. Be over here. Man, I'd have thought for sure they'd have these pinned out. All right, guess not. I'll be right back. I'm gonna do more research. Just double check that that's the best place to solder to. No, it looks like that's it, unless I want to solder to this PCB here, which I want to do even less. Okay. All right, so. Let's uh, start scraping. So this little itty bitty one which one is it? CNS. This one. This bottom one right here, right under CNS, that I have my knife right on. That's select. And this one up right above it is start. Under, in between the C and the N. Uh, but right to the left of the C is select. So I think that's the one we're going to use. Try scraping it away. Actually, hang on. I have a better tool for this. I actually went out and bought one of these specifically for shit like this. Um, this is a fiberglass scratch pen. I think I just revealed enough to solder to. Let's try it out. Tin that up. Flux that up. got solder sticking to it. It's not exactly... Oh, there we go. Alright, so we're definitely using a mag um, enamel magnet wire for this joint. And despite all the practice I had last night, I am still tremendously bad at this. I'll flux it up. reference last night I was working on that funny playing IPS kit soldering that back together I don't know which video is gonna end up getting uploaded first but if you don't know what I'm talking about now you will soon I just realized I was out of frame there my bad had some luck 
turn the scrape. Now this is why I hate working with this stuff. It's just so hard to get solder to stick to it. Or I guess it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. Because I don't have a I don't have a good strategy. Alright. I'm gonna route this before I do anything else. So this goes up there. We'll bend it up and out of the way. We'll go up and around. And then come down and across. So that it needs to be approximately that long. I will say, when you're working with a short bit of wire, though, you can always tell as soon as um, as soon as you break through the enamel coating because the wire starts getting hot in your hand. Scrape the slag off. <laughs> Sorry. This thing was proving very stubborn. It is also just now occurring to me that I might just have tremendously shitty enamel wire. that I'm not specifically doing anything wrong, aside from buying the wrong supplies. The coating has changed color, but it's still not taking solder. Uh, Oh, use enamel magnet wire. You could just burn the coating off and solder straight to it. Okay, bud. Sure you can. There we go. Just the very tip is exposed, but that's good enough. A couple seconds to clean this up before I get PCB dust under my BGA CPU, PCB solder dust, excuse me.
Okay. Are you kidding me? Nice. <sighs> I didn't get this side like I thought I did. There we go. Let's route this Come over. I'm thinking actually I can run it under. <laughs> Let's not try and run it under the CPU. That's not gonna work. <laughs> I'm going to run it under my wiring, though. I foresee myself having to take this apart and fix that. But it's okay. I'm just gonna grab a cotton swab, clean this up. Because despite what anyone says, even though it's called no clean, you are supposed to clean it. Or you should clean it at least. Alright. And it just absolutely drives me insane routing enamel wire cross contacts for other but or for like um, capacitors and shit. So I'm gonna route it up and around whatever this is to give it the least amount of things that it's crossing. Good enough. So let's actually test my soldering before going any further. So I believe... I'm not sure if this is the same ground. Gonna jam that in there and hope for the best. Try and click the button with my other hand. Oh. 
Ah, oh, there we go. It's working. So whenever I press the button, my iron beeps, or my multimeter beeps. Iron, Jesus, okay. Um, two left, easiest ones. Saved them for last. Uh, should we use enamel wire on this? That is the question. I really don't want to, so no. <laughs> All right. So this goes to clean that up. This right here, LN. I believe. Yeah, it looks right. Big old solder ball on there. There we go. And then this we can route top over down right here. This should be the lower, I believe. Sorry, I'm out of frame. Oh, that is way too long. That's okay, we can route it underneath this board up from the bottom. I said we can route it under the board. No? There we go. Almost there, guys. Just tucking the wire in. Heat routing wires crisscrossing a top on top like that. Oh well, not much can be done about that. button looks like, or wire rather, looks like we need to wire it to the middle of that pin. There's got to be a better pin, are you kidding me? Good lord, I guess not. There goes nothing. It is the middle? this button
not that buck huge capacitor that I just accidentally started desoldering but my tip is just it doesn't physically fit between the components oh wait yeah it does I just got to be smarter than uh, than the Game Boy I hope that's it. It's a bit long. Feels on there pretty good. Tug on it, it's not going anywhere. Uh, the routing looks like this is better. But I don't think it makes too big of a difference. And we need to bring that to right there. There we go. Well then. Now we just need to put this bad boy back together and everything's just gonna work perfectly. Just you watch. Because I don't think I'll be able to handle it if it doesn't work. If I if I broke this. Uh, all right. getting apart. While you have this thing apart, I suppose it's good enough time as any to uh, clean it up. And I don't just mean like the, the shell. Um, and clean out the power switch. I'm 90% sure I've already done this Game Boy, so I'm not gonna do this one. But I have done a video on that if you want to take a look. If I remember, I'll go ahead and throw a link to that as well. Shoulder button. Alright. Let's 
going surprisingly smoothly so far. I think that ended up under a button membrane though, so I'm going to tug it out. Okay. Everything else looks good. The reason I specifically chose an enamel wire for the start button and only that is because of how small a target that I had it soldered to. Um, if it were soldered to anything bigger like these test pads here, I would have no problem using a thicker wire. But my thought process behind that is if I solder it, if for some reason I were to accidentally pull it off, um, I think the enamel magnet wire should break first because it's such a small joint. Whereas if I use a thicker wire, a stronger wire, I might accidentally rip the pad up. Now I haven't ripped up any pads in a very long time, so we're probably safe, but just in case. And that does fit surprisingly well. Um, yeah, I suppose that's for the best. Let me go ahead and put a little bit of cap done on this. Just so nothing shorts on the back of the screen. Alright. Buttons go in. I was just about to panic about a missing part because I saw the um, the crystal that I removed, the oscillator, this thing. I just started panicking like, oh my god, did a part fall off while I was putting it back together? No, part did not fall off while I was putting it back together. I just doesn't matter, I still panicked anyway. Anyway. scratch my paint. These cheap ass screws. There we go. Doesn't fit as well as it should. Unfortunately that's due to the uh, overclock board. But don't worry. All should be well. Alright. Close the bit, Teddy. Extended capacity battery. And normally this would be a crosshead JIS screw, but I lost the captive screw because I never actually put in the C clip. But I found this torque screw that it's perfectly and so that's what I use last but not least the faceplate but I'm gonna leave that off because 
you never test it when it's fully assembled, otherwise it's never it doesn't work, you know. Oh. Alright, so there's a spot right in the middle. That's definitely gonna have to change. I'm thinking if we remove a little bit of the um, material around the screen, like there's this uh, gasket material that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Probably remove that. Because I don't like that mark in the screen. But here goes nothing. Is it... Ah. So if you've ever wanted to play Pokemon, didn't want to grind everything out, I think that's as high as it goes. Or if you want to slow things down a little. <laughs> oh, this is great. I can get used to that. <laughs> oh god, it cues the button inputs, that's hilarious. Alright, if we restart the Game Boy, let's set it back to the slow. It should reset back to default, and it does. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. So let's fix the dot in the screen. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, just a little bit, and instead of peeling off the um, shit around the screen, I'm just gonna pull the screen from this Game Boy. Um, so remember when I had that bag and I said it came with two things? Here's that other thing. I haven't uploaded the video at this specific moment in time, but by the time you see this video, this video should be up. I hope. This way it preserves my screen and I don't have to sit here picking foam off. Alright, good enough. Plus I never got this thing to fit right anyhow. Easy peasy. Ooh. Just threw my screwdriver. Not sure how that happened. Uh oh. That's probably not good. thing we left the faceplate off or this thing would be totally busted.
All right. So I'm thinking, or at least hoping, that this extra foam around the sides and the back of the LCD are what is prevent preventing it from sitting nice and flush. And instead of sitting here and picking the foam off, I'm just going to use another LCD that already has the foam removed. Or I guess technically never had the foam in the first place. switch fell out I'm guessing maybe that foam wasn't quite enough. <laughs> but if there's no mark in the screen, I'll call it good. Another option would be to just start pulling layers off the screen, I guess. screw is already stripped so I need to be careful with it. I was going to replace it after this video when I clean this thing up. Yeah, not sure what happened, but that fits very loosely now. I don't see a black mark now, so that's a step in the right direction, I suppose. Or a mark in the screen. So yeah, I guess that's all we needed. Speed, I am speed. <laughs> so, word of note with overclock mods, this doesn't work with flashcards. If you try and run a flash cart in here, it's just gonna crash. I mean, if you try and overclock with the flash cart, it'll, it'll run fine at the normal clock speed. Um, but unfortunately, that is just the nature of the beast. The flash carts are not designed to interface at the speeds that this mod commands. But it'll work fine with OEM carts, which is what this is. 
Uh, let's try one more. Do I have Mario? No, I don't. I don't have Mario. I thought I had Super Mario World handy, but I don't. So we're not testing with that. Never mind. Um, screw it though. For shits and giggles, let's see what happens with a flashcard. So, as expected, boots normal. Um, let's try... Ah, that'll work. Oh, shh. It's a new game. Never mind. We'll try a different room. Uh, I think I have Blazing Emerald on here. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know where the actual game that I was playing is, though. These all have saves in here, so I wonder if I already set them up. Yes, I did. Excellent. So we can run around like normal. Let's try going down one level. That seems to be working, actually. I'm surprised. the second level. That works too. Still slow. Alright, that looks normal speed to me. Let's try up one level. Yeah. And once you go once you start going up it's it's when it crashes. You can go slow, but you can't go fast. Gotta go slow I guess. I guess. Excuse me. But there you go. Want to overclock your Game Boy Micro? <laughs> I mean, I don't have anything else to say. It works. Um, I kind of expected to run into more issues, but here we are. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I'll uh, make sure you check out the description as well. I always throw links to all the stuff that I use in my videos in the description, uh, as well as a lot of the time I also throw in other helpful information, sometimes pictures of close-ups of the mod. Uh, in this particular case, I didn't take any pictures. I completely forgot. And the thing's already together, so that's not happening. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.